Welcome. Everything is emotionally devastating. You are listening to Fork and Bullshirt, the Good Place podcast. I'm Vivian. And I'm Jason. We'll be the architects of your journey into the afterlife. Today we're talking about Season 3, Episode 13, Pandemonium. This is the finale of Season 3. It was written by Jen Statsky and Megan Amram, directed by Michael Schur, and it aired January 24th, 2019. (sighs) All right. Are you emotionally prepared to talk about this episode, Jason? Sure. See ya. See ya. Sayonara, Chidi. Oh Adios. Oh, God. See you never. So callous. Okay. <laughs> well, let's get right into it, I guess. Failing to motivate Michael, Eleanor poses as the architect and welcomes John. Eleanor quickly informs the others of the new plan, hoping that Michael will eventually take over. Tahani recognizes John as a gossip columnist who tormented her on Earth, and she understands what Sean did. He chose residents that would torment them. Dun, dun, dun! Mm-hmm. Our first twist of the episode. Yeah, and it's it's a doozy. Yep. <laughs> Sean's not playing fair whatsoever. Oh, no. It's ridiculous. But did we really expect him to? <laughs> no. It would have been boring if there wasn't something interesting about these new residents. Yeah. We had to have something. So let's go all the way back to the beginning of the episode. Um, We've got Eleanor panicking as Michael panics. She's trying to make him calm down and, and get to being the architect. But this reveal that Eleanor's going to introduce herself as the architect is super telegraphed. Like, you know, it's coming. It's pretty obvious, but it's still fun because you know what's coming and you're excited for it. Mm. Okay. It's interesting to see that Eleanor is trying to reassure Michael, but she doesn't really know why he's freaking out. She just figures he's panicking because, I don't know, he's worried that the plan's not going to work. But we know that Michael's panicking because of Sean's plan and the threat. Yes. And he doesn't reveal that to them in this episode. He doesn't say anything. So Eleanor just assumes he's freaking out because it's kind of a lot. (laughs) Mm -hmm. It's enough to freak out about on its own, really. But this is what Michael does. This is what Mm. he's the architect. This is he's done it 800 times. He should be able to do it. So I guess it'd be confusing for Eleanor to not really get why he's panicking so much. Yeah, but the stakes are so much higher this time. All those times it was really just about finding a cool new way to torture people. Mm -hmm. And this time it's trying to make sure that not the entire population of the world gets tormented for all of existence. Right. Stakes are definitely higher. (laughs) Much higher. (laughs) And I mean, Michael is just middle management. Oh. You know, if only Eleanor had not said that she was the architect, a lot of these issues wouldn't be an issue. If she had just said, oh, hi, I'm Eleanor. Welcome to the neighborhood. This is my co-worker. Michael, whatever, if she had just said something or if Michael had hidden behind some plants, plants or um, curtains, all would be much easier anyway. You you think? Well, at least a little bit easier. It could just be like, oh, hey, I'm Eleanor. I'm part of the welcome wagon. Right. You know, instead of I'm the architect of this neighborhood, Mm -hmm. making her now an immortal being who has never experienced life on Earth. Right. Right. That's an issue. Yeah. She should have really just been like, here's Janet. Janet's the architect and she's also a helper. Yeah, she didn't think that far ahead. (laughs) There wasn't a whole lot of time, but Mm. yeah. I'm part of the welcome wagon. That would have been... Something like that would have been good. So I remember earlier this week, you told me that someone on Reddit translated the text from John's file. What was in there? Yeah, it was really neat. Uh, user, there was a couple users, uh, three actually. User 11291, Dina Phoenix, and Elixir 123 um, all kind of cracked the language of the afterlife and were able to translate the list that Eleanor looks over and a lot of the other you know, written words as well. The list was basically, obviously, a list of terrible things that he's done because mm-hmm. he's not a very good person. Um, Some of my favorites were, he voted in spite on TV reality show, although he had missed the prior episode. (laughs) Said New York is over to a cab driver. (laughs) 
Okay. Gave someone a Nickelback CD, mm. found a toupee in a closet, and put it on dog on Christmas. <laughs> what? Aww. There's a, there's a big list online. You can look it up. Oh, that's um, cute. In the Good Place subreddit under translations. Very cool. Yeah, I wouldn't even know where to start with anything like that, to be honest. <laughs> So we get some pretty cute food puns in this episode. We're back into the universe where food puns are abundant. We get foot logger. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, it's beard. in like a, fo- a little foot stein. The boot. Yeah. Lasagna come out tomorrow. Wow, that one's great. That one's really good. <laughs> uh, beignet and the Jets, which we've already seen before. Um, we have Chai there with a picture of Janet, which is adorable, and Ponzu scheme. Mm-hmm. So they didn't only go for frozen yogurt chops this time. So maybe making this not so heaven heaven a little less obvious, I suppose. And then once we're in the neighborhood and we're walking around um, and we see the other humans. Uh, we see that Jason is back in his robes, but this time they're really different than the ones he had in season one. Mm-hmm. Back in season one, he had sort of like a cream tan kind of Yeah, they were really robes. subtle, like neutral. Yeah, very neutral. Um, and the shirt was more like a tunic with pants. And this time it is much more traditional. These ones are really similar to robes worn in Laos, which is still the wrong country. I think that's funny because Jason is Filipino. Um, so they're still like not from the right country. Um, you know, Buddhist monks, I guess, are not a big thing in um, the Philippines, but they are in Laos. Um, well, Michael tried. Janet yeah. tried. I mean, no, I, just, I think it's funny, but I also really like these robes. I think they're much more vibrant, much more interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, they're more, I guess, accurate. Or it makes me wonder if he's going to use the name Jianyu again. Right. Is and... he going to be silent? Yeah. Is he going to be silent so the other humans don't question why he made it into heaven? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we're going to go there again, maybe? Well, that also begs the question if... Because, I mean, season one, obviously, Eleanor felt wrong. Mm-hmm. She knew she wasn't a great person. I wonder if John is going to think that he deserves the afterlife does he belong there like is he gonna even try and get better because right now it seems like he thinks he's the cat's pajamas like he thinks he's great of course he does but i guess it's similar to to hani right she thought she belonged there but yeah i'm not really sure what the plan is there yeah eleanor really assumes that people are going to be asking for chidi's help really soon which is why she's pressuring him to you know read all of john's files now um, that was <laughs> useless. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I she assumes, yeah, but like, I don't know if he will. I don't think he Is will. Is Simone going to? Are the other two humans that we haven't even met yet going to? Simone's a good person. Yeah. She probably thinks she belongs there. Yeah. As far as I know, she's not awful. She seemed pretty darn nice at the beginning of the season, so. <laughs> and uh, we, we still are missing one person, though. Mm. So. One or two. We don't know if Chidi was intended to be the third or not. Right. And that's a whole other conversation. Right. Okay. So going back to this particular scene, we've got Chidi uh, looking over the boxes and I couldn't help but zoom in on a couple other ones. He mentions that one of the boxes is just one trip to Wendy's. Um, A couple others were argument with American apparel cashier, attempts to read the goldfinch, tripped over shoelace and stubbed toe in Maine. Wow. So there's a lot of thoughts. I can't imagine how many boxes there are if there's a box dedicated to all of those things. I'm going to say a lot. Yeah. John also mentions that his website, the Gossip Toilet, was responsible for the Olsen Twins countdown clock. And I am very sad to inform anyone who doesn't already know this. That's a real thing. Yeah. There were multiple websites with countdowns to when the Olsen twins would become 18, and then you could, I don't know, legally, sexually objectify them. It's gross. I hate it. I did not need to know this. 
I am sadder now. Yeah, it just kind of gives you an idea of what type of person this guy is. And he's really proud of it. He's like, yeah, this was our like crowning achievement. No, yeah, he's disgusting and gross. He also mentions that he's going to get plastic surgery now that they're in the good place. And he says, none of this face is going to stay. So is that kind of like, a, you know, maybe we're going to recast this guy next season? I wonder. I don't know. It just seemed like a bit of an odd line, but... Yeah, maybe he just assumes that you could change your appearance. Mm. He thinks you can. Well, but... Eleanor's not going to change her appearance, you know? She's a legit snack, so there's no there reason. Go. Yep. <sighs> Man, this whole thing is just... This is like a devilishly brilliant plan. Sean is a genius. Yeah, he in is. In his awfulness. Yes, it's really good. <laughs> And really sad and awful and I hate him and I love him and I think he's great and I think he's the worst. The second resident is Simone, but Jen rules Sean's residence acceptable. She tells Michael they can erase Simone's memory back to before she met Chidi. Dahani tries to befriend John, hoping she can overcome her old patterns. Eleanor introduces Simone to the neighborhood. Oh, this is another reveal that got me. Um... I didn't really expect Simone to come back. I don't know why. It seems so obvious now. Didn't I call it last episode? Didn't I say that? One if one of them is Simone and one if one of them was... I know, but I kept thinking, well, that's stupid and I don't want to see people that we already know. Yes. And I didn't think about how Simone would work perfectly as a As torture. a foil for Chidi. Well, yeah, <laughs> as a torture device or at least a wrench in the gears. Yeah. Yeah, I thought when Eleanor opened up that file that it was going to be one of her exes. Right. Didn't expect to see Simone. Uh, sad that she died. I it's weird. Simone. It's like it's like a type of show where, yeah, all these people are dead. Like, they all died. Yeah. But we kind of don't worry about that. Yeah, no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I thought it would be maybe her mom or her Ooh. dad or something. Mm. So. Well, it's still possible. Yeah, it's definitely still possible we see a return of a family member. We, Jason in this scene with the judge is so funny. Oh my god, Manny Jacinto does such a good job in this scene. When he's panicking and he's saying, And how are we going to make Simone better when she's asleep the whole time? Hello? We can't work with this! <laughs> I kill myself laughing every time. I think I rewound it like four times just <laughs> writing my notes for this episode. Oh, that's great. Oh, he was really, he wasn't given a whole lot to do in this episode. No. But basically every moment that he was given screen time, he did fantastic. So still really happy to have him around, even though we're not getting a whole lot of character development from him. Still loving it. Also, I think we got our first moment of product p placement like in the afterlife, because in the phone call with Jen and Sean. Starbucks. Yes. On her plate in front of her is a bag from Starbucks, which is such a weird thing. Did she bring that as like a memento from Earth? She really mm. likes Starbucks. I don't know. Yeah, it's interesting. Maybe now that she's been to Earth, she got a little taste of the goodies. Mm. She's going back, maybe. Breaking maybe. some of her own rules, maybe. maybe? Ooh. I wonder if this product placement will lead to greater things in season four. <laughs> so this whole thing seems really unfair to me. And I really wish that Sean had been given some kind of punishment. Because even if someone doesn't remember all of them, Chidi was still in a relationship with her. And how exactly can Jen imagine that Chidi's going to proceed from this point, right? Right. And then, of course, the question becomes, did Sean hope that Chidi would decide to erase his own memory and get rebooted? Is he meant to be the person that's torturing Eleanor? Is he meant to be one of those four new humans? Or just what if, like, what would have stopped him from just saying, hey, Simone, I died as well. What a bummer. It's great to see you here. Hmm. What would have been that repercussion? Probably that it would have affected their relationship as, I don't know, teacher-student. And now that Chidi's with Eleanor. That's going to make things a little... Yeah, I don't know. Difficult. It depends, too, is 
Is Simone supposed to be someone's soulmate? Does that come into it? Is she supposed to be Chidi's soulmate? Because that's a no. Are they going to have soulmates? Yeah, we don't even know that. So it's it's really just this giant kerfuffle. And it bothers me that there's no repercussion for Sean, even though it's definitely a dick move. He kind of broke the rules, too. Like, they told Sean to choose people that were similar level of badness, I right. guess. Um, which, I mean, I'm thinking of it now, isn't really anything because everybody goes to the bad place anyway. So Well, yeah, but you can't have someone who's right, right, Mother yeah. Teresa-like. Sure. But Simone is probably equal level badness to someone like Chidi, right? right? Who was pretty much a good guy on Earth, but was messed over by this whole system. And John is, I don't know, kind of equivalent to Eleanor, I suppose. Yeah, probably. So we're going to have to have someone who's real dumb. If we're going with, like, mirrors of people. Yeah. Yeah. So he didn't break the rules. But it's just one of those things that's, like, that's really sneaky. And I feel like Jen likes the humans enough that she would normally change things. Like, she would say, no, 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 you gotta pick another human. John is maybe fine. But Simone actually knew them. That's Mm -hmm. different. They knew her. Yeah. That's a tough one. It is actually nice to see uh, Tahani resist her old ways, too. And then John's response when she tries to befriend him (laughs) is very true of the internet now. I don't know where this came from. I kind of love it. I kind of hate it. Um, But a lot of this, like, oh, you're so cute. It's gross. I love you. I never want to see you again. It's so weird. It's very bizarre. I don't really get it. But I feel it. I just don't understand the kids these days. <laughs> um, when Eleanor is showing Simone around the neighborhood, uh, Simone points out that all the residents seem so nice. And that is a very big problem they are going to have to deal with next season. Because how are they supposed to talk about their lives on Earth? They've never been to Earth. They're Janet and Derek babies, right? Like all the other residents. Yeah, and- that's true. And then not only that, but in season one, Michael was there to introduce all four humans to each other. He was the one who made sure that Tahani and Jason were soulmates and Eleanor and Chidi were soulmates. And then they met before the big party in the first episode. Like he made sure that they were always ending up in the same place, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. torturing each other. Right. Right. How is he going to do that this time around? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, especially if he's not doing it. Yeah. And what's from preventing Simone from trying to be friends with, you know, resident number three, who happens to be the third baby that Derek and Janet made and who's not very sophisticated, right? <laughs> uh, there's just so many variables that I feel like Michael watching this episode, like I start to get panicky. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of directions I can go for season four and it's... It is. It's anxiety inducing almost like thinking about Mm -hmm. all the things that can go wrong. Also exciting too, to an extent, for sure. Yep. As viewers and as fans of the show. Yes. I would not be happy in or excited in any way if I were part of this. Yeah. (laughs) Chidi fears he will be unable to avoid contaminating the experiment and tells Michael he needs to erase his memories too. They try to think of another option, but Chidi assures them he's thought of everything and this is the only way. The team prepares to say goodbye to Chidi, and both Eleanor and Chidi try to stay strong. So here we are, halfway through the episode, and we take a sharp turn into Sad Town. Population, literally everyone. Okay? (laughs) Yeah, we're no longer focused on these new residents coming in and how they're going to introduce them and how the plan's going to work, and suddenly, oh crap, Chidi needs to be erased. Yeah, the biggest twist in this episode, full of twists. So, <laughs> yeah. Michael Schur is just sitting there laughing. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. You guys have no idea what's coming. Aww. That's how I feel 
rewatching this episode, it's like, oh, this is fun. Lots of hijinks, lots of, lots of laughs. Oh, oh, go oh, no, it's 10 minutes in and Chidi's gonna get erased. And now I'm sad. So it's Eleanor's trolley problem. Mm-hmm. Sacrifice Chidi to save the group. Well, it's more like Chidi's trolley problem, right? Because Eleanor's not the one who brings this up. She's not the one who's no, making any not. decisions. He is. He's choosing to sacrifice himself just like Michael. But he is relying on Michael to do it. Right. So, I mean, he could say, erase me, and then they could just be like, no. So it's not really his decision at the end. It's Michael and Eleanor's, technically. They're the ones that have to pull the lever to do it. I disagree with you. I think it's Chidi's because he's the one who makes that decision to have his memories erased. He could decide to just do his best and try not to mess it all up. But he clearly states that, you know, it's not just him being awkward around his ex. It's the fact that him being awkward around his ex could doom everyone forever. Right. But if we picture it literally on... If he's on the track mm. and then the group is on the other track right. and Chidi is over there saying, hey, you know what? Run me over. Save the, the other guys. And then the guy in the trolley is like, you know what? No, I'm not doing that. Yeah. So Chidi, as much as he's deciding to make that choice, he's not in control. He's mm. not driving the tram. No, not completely. Yeah. He still relies on Michael. They have to work as a team. To it's a group effort together. to erase Chidi's memory. <laughs> it's a group effort to deliver this amount of pain to yes. me <laughs> and many other viewers. <laughs> oh, God. <sighs> so Chidi makes this huge decision alone. And I hate it, but I am also very proud of him because he is so calm, he's so sure, and he has so much confidence in this choice. Like, he knows this is what he needs to do. He's not going to hesitate. He doesn't panic and overthink. He just knows and says it like it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just, I don't know. Is it worse to see him resign to this fate or to see him panic? <laughs> I think it's worse to have him accept it. I don't know why. Mm. It just seems like admitting defeat, mm. but at the same time being a hero. Right. Ugh. It's very courageous. Yeah, it's really tough. I don't like it. It just makes me sad, guys. It's very brave of him. Mm -hmm. And last season we had Michael sacrifice himself um, for the humans when he was going through the portal or when they were all going through the portal to the judges' chambers. And he stayed that, behind. Yeah, but that kind of, that sacrifice didn't really do anything for me. I wasn't actually upset. Cue someone going back to that episode in the podcast <laughs> to see if I was upset, because I don't remember being upset, but maybe I said I was. I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, that one didn't have a lot of emotional weight for me, because it was very obvious that we're going to keep Ted Danson in the show. And we're not probably going to erase his memories. I guess I didn't think that was an option until this episode. Um, but it just felt like the stakes weren't really there for me. Mm -hmm. Whereas for this episode, it just feels like this sacrifice has a lot more weight behind it. A lot of emotional weight for someone like me, for sure. Um, There's a lot of repercussions to the decision. Memory yeah. is such a fickle thing for... All these characters. Absolutely. They've been messed with a lot. And to have only one of the humans suddenly not remember anything and not even be in the same timeline as them, be an entirely different timeline. Ugh, it's a lot. I mean, I think Jason's going to be the one to screw everything up. Oh, yeah? Because, I mean, all he has to do is be like, oh, Chidi, you remember that time we did, you know, ordered pizza? Yeah, it's very possible that he's going to bring up some sort of memory. But I think that Eleanor and Tahani would be able to laugh it off. Yeah. Yeah. At least I think there's definitely going to be moments and jokes about that. And it's just memories. Michael has the power to show him the past. That's show true. him all the different reboots and, you know, 
maybe show him a bunch of stuff and avoid specifics. So show him his relationship with Tahani, Chidi, and Eleanor, and just maybe gloss over some of the Simone bits. Right. You said Chidi. You meant Jason. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's true. I don't know how all of that would work. I'm going to imagine that they're not going to do that for a good while in season four, if they plan to do that at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a tough one. And so Chidi is just kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place at this point. Like he knows if he doesn't make this choice, it could very truly doom everyone. Or if he does, he has to let go of the person he loves and the people that he cares so much about and all of his memories and experiences. And not only that, but like he's choosing to suddenly forget everything he knows. He's not part of this plan anymore. He's just another resident. Yeah. And the part of the problem is he just doesn't believe in himself. That's the reason he has to do this in the first place. He doesn't believe that he can coexist with Simone and not screw everything up. It's kind of a bummer. He doesn't have enough faith in his own abilities to separate or pretend. I think that he doesn't have faith in his abilities to lie, which is not a bad thing, right? If you just know you're not a good liar, probably not bad, right? I mean, like, choosing to erase your memories for years or whatever, or learning to lie, (laughs) (laughs) seems like such a big stretch to me. But the thing is, learning to lie, right? He doesn't really get a whole lot of chance to practice. Well, he's 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 got Eleanor. Well... What, is he going to lie? What is he going to lie about to Eleanor? He'll teach them philosophy and she'll teach him lying 101. Oh, goodness. I don't think so. But the problem is that he would meet Simone. He would need to work closely with her. And like he says, she's really perceptive. So she's going to notice something is off. And she's not going to know why. And she's going to have questions. All Chidi has to do, literally, is say... I'm I'm speechless around you because you're such a you're such a babe. Sorry, I I got nothing. I, it's really I'm I'm sorry. I'm terrible with women. I'm super awkward around you. I'm so sorry. Okay, this isn't the Big Bang Theory, so we're not <laughs> going there. Um, ugh. Uh, no, I get it. I really do. I think that he immediately is like, no, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna be able to do this. Like, I know my limitations. I know I'm not a good liar, and I won't be able to fake that I've never known her and I've never you know, been in a relationship with her. Like, I just can't do that. I'm not Eleanor. If he was Eleanor, if it was, if it was Eleanor in this situation, she could lie circles around that Well, she's going to have to. She's going to have to do exactly what Chidi can't. Yeah, exactly. But she's equipped to do it because she's a world-class liar, as she tells us in this episode. Mm -hmm. So does this choice kind of frustrate you then? Yeah, absolutely. Because the choice that she's making right now is so drastic in retrospect. Like, all he has to do is just pretend like he doesn't know her. It seems like such an easy task. Would you be able to do that with me? Absolutely. Oh, my God. If it means the difference between erasing my memory or pretending around you and then eventually maybe, you know, telling her the truth. Mm-mm. You can't tell them the truth. Sure you can. No, you can't. Sean's bent the rules. The team can bend the rules. But then that erases the whole point. After the test is done, it's what, a year? Yeah. That's all they have to that's all he has to do it for. Okay. A year of lying versus, you know, a year of your memory gone, not knowing all your friends, and that would suck. <sighs> but the stakes are so high, Jason. Make an effort. Oh yikes. Okay. We have thoughts about this. <laughs> Oh boy so we'll continue at least try and if he screws up then michael can just erase simone's memory again they're not allowed to do that no reboots no nothing there's no no it's didn't say reboot just wipe her memory for a bit i don't think you can do that why he's because wiping think, cheese memory because i think jen is watching that closely but they can't do that mm. so let's continue on chidi's last night michael shows eleanor and chidi footage of their time together Chidi trusts that they will find their way back to each other. They say a tearful goodbye, and Chidi leaves with Michael. 
And this is the moment in the episode where I become a sobbing mess. A hot mess. Oh, big time. Yeah. I'm really glad that Michael does this for them. It gives them a chance to actually grieve together. Mm -hmm. Because before this, we're seeing Eleanor and Chidi just kind of, I don't know, pass it off is not that big of a deal. And it's a huge deal. Like, a huge deal. And not only that, but he's... So he's giving them a chance to grieve together before Eleanor has to grieve on her own, which is so sad. And Michael caring for them that much makes this scene even more emotionally devastating to me because he's very father figure like and it's really sweet that he does this. And puts together a little clip show. Yeah. And the montage totally kills me. The music <laughs> and all these new scenes of cheating Eleanor together. It's just so nice to see um, new moments interspaced with um, familiar moments from season one and two. Mm -hmm. And it just hurts so much more to watch them watch it than just to have us watch it. Like, it's just, there's too much. It's all <laughs> together. It's just too much. So is that a llama or a camel in Eleanor's house? I assumed it was a llama. Perhaps it was a camel. I don't know. Yeah, I the, didn't the face looked attention. off, but I don't know. <laughs> anyway, Eleanor showing Chidi the Kendall Kardashian Jenner family tree, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> it was really funny. Yeah, that was great. Yeah, they got some cute little moments in there, but then they got some really emotional moments. A lot of running to kiss the other person moments. Yeah, you can imagine Eleanor's running off to the medium place and then Chidi follows her and... Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then the two of them in the in the lake and the boat. And... I know, which was Chidi's theoretical fantasy. And it became real. <laughs> At least in one iteration. Yeah. And, oh, but just the last, the last scene we get with the two of them having this picnic and it starts to rain. And I get that it's really sweet because it's supposed to be the good place, right? But it starts to rain, so it's the bad place. But... Even a bad place is good when you're with someone that you love, right? <laughs> it's so it's so cheesy, but that it's true, so okay? It's true. If you have to go through horrible things in your life, if you have to experience really crappy moments, sometimes it's just not that crappy if you got someone you love with you, right? Right. right. So that's what I got out of that. And now Eleanor has to go through the crappiest possible, one of the worst possible things someone could ever go through without that person that she loves and that's so sad but at least she can kind of pretend that she knows a lot about him because she's the architect so at least she can drop true. a few facts and that's things true. that he likes and loves and mm -hmm. they'll be accurate because she knows him so well yeah did you get a little misty at least during the montage yeah, it was sad okay it's definitely it was very sad it was really well done it was a little heartbreaking but it's a feel-good show. We know that something's going to end up positive at some point in the future. Uh, maybe. Probably. Hopefully. Have faith. Uh, Have faith in Michael and the whole plan and Janet. Okay. They'll bring it all back. <laughs> so another part that really breaks my heart is just how strong and sure Chidi is. You know, he's there to comfort Eleanor because he knows in about... 15 minutes none of this is really gonna matter for him because he won't remember it so he just gets right to the point and it kills me when he says he'll miss her and his voice kind of breaks a little bit mm -hmm. um and he says you know time means nothing jeremy bury me baby <laughs> which is so cute um and that they'll find each other again and yeah you're right like we end on a hopeful note when eleanor is like yeah you're right we found each other hundreds of times before We'll do it again. Yep. It's gonna this suck, time's no different. We'll do it again. And this scene reminds me a lot of the Angel episode, I Will Remember You. Ugh. Yeah. Ugh. That yeah, episode. Okay. See, you're getting all like, uh, uh, emotional about that episode. Yeah. This is more emotional to me than that episode. No, Angel and Buffy forever. That's heartbreaking. Okay. So in that episode, Angel has to sacrifice his humanity and a chance at a life with Buffy, who he loves, so that he can continue the fight against evil. So in that episode, basically the entire day that he has spent with Buffy, being human, 
finally really being with her just and gets out taken in the away. sunlight and being human yep all of those get taken away from him so then her buffy, memory gets re- erased yeah so buffy doesn't remember any of it and he gets to live with all of those memories knowing that he could have in some world had a happy life as mm-hmm. a human being again and as a human being with buffy so that episode is a famous tearjerker of that series, um, just like I'm sure this episode will become. And Buffy also says that she wishes they had more time, just like Eleanor does. So a lot of similarities. Both of them are very heartbreaking. This one definitely works more for me. The angel one works more for you, clearly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but essentially, it's it's just so sad to have all of these memories of a person and they don't remember you and of course that makes me think of the analogy to dementia like someone that you loved for years suddenly forgetting things and then to the point of not recognizing you and not knowing the life that you had together that's Mm -hmm. honestly i can't think of (laughs) many more things that are more heartbreaking than that so so we'll continue (laughs) The next day, Eleanor sits at Michael's desk and asks Janet to tell her the answer to life. Janet says there is no answer, that the beauty of existence is that two people can find each other and have a life together in the pandemonium of the universe. Eleanor takes a deep breath and welcomes Chidi to the neighborhood. She asks Janet the age-old question of, what's the answer to life? The universe and everything, (laughs) which is... What the pandimensional hyperintelligent species of beings from the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy asked. They built a supercomputer called Deep Thought, and they asked it the same question. What's the answer to life? And Deep Thought, the supercomputer, took seven and a half million years to come up with the answer. Wow. Which was 42. And everybody freaked out and got really upset. And Deep Thought said, well, pretty sure you don't know what the actual question is. Once you ask the right question, then the answer will make sense. Right. And Janet's answer is very appropriate. Yeah, absolutely. There is no answer. And if we did know an answer, then we might not enjoy life as much as we do. Yeah. And if your question is just, what's the point of all this? There's going to be about a million answers to that. There's going to be, honestly, seven billion answers to that because each of us has our own slightly different definition of what the point is of living mm-hmm. and of existence itself. <laughs> yeah. I really love Janet's speech. She gets to sum up what's wonderful about the insanity of the universe. You know, this idea of finding someone and in a world that makes no sense that that someone still makes sense to you. Mm-hmm. Um, not only does she say that, but she also tells Eleanor that they're going to do this together, that she's not alone in all of this. And that, made me really happy makes me cry a little bit too um just knowing that eleanor is always gonna have friends that have her back yep she's grown so much Mm -hmm. and eleanor (laughs) yes (laughs) yes. um slight call back to season two episode seven here um eleanor is wearing the same shirt she wore back in janet and michael Hmm. um that episode And someone theorized that she was wearing Chidi's shirt. So if she is again wearing Chidi's shirt in this episode, that just makes it so much more sad. Um, That she's holding on to like a piece of him. Mm -hmm. Literally on her. That makes me... Anyway. Yeah. (laughs) Not going to think too hard about it. Just going to move on. (laughs) So yeah. Now we have what? Season one Chidi? Is Still going to be nervous Chidi. Yeah, is he going to be able to get his memories back at some point when the experiment's complete? There are so many questions about who he's going to be and how things are going to go from here. Ooh, it's overwhelming. <laughs> um, so I've heard a couple of people, and I've seen, well, I've seen a couple of people complaining online about these constant memory wipes. What are your thoughts on that? It's... It's like a crutch Mm. they can always rely on. Like, well, if things get too hectic or too weird or we don't know what to do with the story, we'll just wipe a memory and figure it out from there. Mm -hmm. Um, But in this context, it makes sense. 
I like this and it definitely has impact. I mean, I don't hate it. Okay. I feel like the memory wipes were sort of becoming predictable um, up to this point, but this one has real emotional weight behind it. And I feel like it's much more earned than the other ones. Like there's a really good reason and there's going to be a big fallout from this. Yeah, memory this wipe. isn't it's a not... reboot. This is a full, just a person's memory being wiped. Yeah. It's happening every single season. So at some point they just have to stop doing it, even if it is, I think, earned. Or they just do it in different ways every season. That has different impact because the first, the first season finale memory wipe completely changed the game. Right. It completely threw that in and everyone was like, holy crap, they can do that. They're going to reset. That was wild and then it whole started the whole reboot of season two which was focused on the reboots and trying to figure out from there and then there was a brand new wipe at the end of season two where they were back on earth Mm -hmm. so every season so far they've done a different type of wipe which i kind of like yeah okay so you're not finding them kind of predictable no because they're also different they all set the tone for the next season but you were just saying they're a crutch. I was saying that they could be a crutch. Okay. And that's something that the writers could always do. It'd be like, hey, if we don't know what we're going to do, mm. then we can wipe them and, you know, we'll figure out new stories from there. But right. what they're okay. doing doesn't feel like a crutch to me. It feels like setting up the next season. Mm. Okay. Rebooting season one, rebooting, uh, putting them back on Earth season two, and then season three, having just cheaty wiped. Every one of them completely changes up how they're going to tell the story from there. Right. So it doesn't feel cheap. Okay. I wasn't expecting another memory wipe. I was kind of happy that we weren't going in that direction. Um, But I never thought about, you know, one part of the team Mm -hmm. getting wiped. Yeah, it's always been a group effort. Mm -hmm. Wipe everyone. Everyone starts in the same, an even playing field. But yeah, just cheaty kind of messes things up. Yeah. And they're consistently good with season finales. Um, The finale of season one was, of course, a big game changer, as you said. Um, Season two, also a huge deal. Suddenly they're on Earth now. But then season three is is very different. It's a very different creature. It's not going for the the gag, the goopery, um, (laughs) as people would say on RuPaul's Drag Race. They're going for the emotional turmoil, let's say. Uh, But it's still a really big change in our universe. Mm -hmm. But it was kind of interesting because last episode I thought, okay, well, where do we go from here now? Because I felt sort of as though last episode was the season finale. Like we're setting up this new experiment. And I thought, well, what's going to happen next episode? I don't really know where we're going to end up at the end of the season. And... 10 minutes into this episode, I was still thinking the same thing. Like, okay, when's it coming? When are, when's the rug going to be pulled out from under my feet? And then Chidi says he has to get his memory wiped. And there it is. Yep. There it is. So another thought of mine for next season is if Eleanor is the architect, um, then she can't talk to any of the new humans about her life on Earth. No, but she can talk about life on Earth. She can't talk about her own experiences, though. And that's no. what she does. She talks about herself a lot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and it's it just makes it so much more difficult, I think, for her to connect with anybody. Couldn't she just say that <gasps> she went to Earth to do some research? Oh, yeah, okay. I guess so. But then it's not a, I lived life on Earth as a human. It's still different, right? Wouldn't it be interesting if Eleanor had not introduced Michael as the assistant and or maybe she could still do this what if michael takes over the position of human what if like michael pretends to be a human being who died and is a resident and eleanor is the architect because she says oh here's michael he's my assistant oh no she said that he was in dog heaven um but that would have been interesting if they had like just swapped places Hmm. you know i wonder if jen would allow that Hmm, probably not (laughs) (laughs) Although it's not explicitly written in the rules. Right. Yeah. So we get a reference to Paradise Lost, uh, which is an epic poem in blank verse by the 17th century English poet John Milton. I did not read it. 
it is long <laughs> and complicated. At least it seems complicated. I didn't have time. Guys, I didn't read it. But I did wiki it. <laughs> and, <laughs> you Sparks notes it. Yeah. I, no, I, I went even like lower than that. I wikied it. Um, and I, I couldn't help but pull out this one little piece from the wiki um, that said that Pandemonium, which is the center of, the, uh, of hell, um, was designed by an architect who had been the designer of palaces in heaven before his fall. Hmm. So I thought that was interesting. We kind of get a reversal of that with Michael. Of course, there's been so many people who have um, pointed out the the connection of our Michael and the fallen angel Michael. The last thing I wanted to comment on is that in season two, a lot of fans uh, theorized that Michael was the one being tortured thinking, okay, maybe this is his bad place now. But that was ultimately disproved. But now it's true. Sean is like explicitly torturing Michael alongside with all the humans. So it's happening now. Yeah, and Sean's getting enjoyment. Like, (laughs) regardless of how it turns out, Sean's still getting enjoyment out of this. Oh, yeah, 100%. So what are your overall thoughts about this season finale? It's a good one. It's very very contained in episode it's not grand there's not a whole big thing that happens it's well big in scale it's big emotionally yeah so i like it i really like it it's very different from the other seasons that we mentioned before like having the different types of resets um now we're just resetting a single person instead of a whole scenario or the whole experiment or even the whole concept of life and death by sending them back on earth like those were very grand things and this is just how do they react how do our humans react to one of their own getting wiped yeah so they've never been placed in this situation before and i think i like it because season one at the end once everything was wiped it basically felt like okay we got to see all these memories all these moments all these changes but now those people don't know anything about that. So they're not the people that we know anymore. That's not our issue this time. It's interesting. It's it's a way for the showmakers to put us in to put us in the character's shoes. Mm. So we are now in Eleanor's position. We know everything that Chidi's gone through, mm-hmm. but Chidi doesn't. Right. So it's always fun to see how writers or creators try to figure out how to do this when it comes to memory. And there are movies that are, you know, that that always attempt it. Like Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind deals in memory erasure. And I mean, that's another heartbreaking movie, but it deals with people erasing memories of each other. And if you haven't seen it, definitely watch it. Um, Memento is another one that I've talked before about uh, where the writer and director puts you in the shoes of the main character. He doesn't know what he's done, and neither do we. Mm -hmm. He has short-term memory loss, so he has no memory of what he's done. So the filmmaker puts you in his shoes by filming the movie basically backwards. Mm -hmm. So you don't know what he's done. He doesn't know what he's done. So it's it's always neat to see how creators manage around memory in media. Yeah. Yeah, what you were saying about we're now in their shoes... You know, if you're someone like me who sobs at this episode, uh, you know, you're feeling that grief like Eleanor feels. You're losing this person, this character that you really have grown to love. Yeah, you're going to miss him and he's not going to. Yeah. He's not going to miss Eleanor because he doesn't know Eleanor. Yeah. So we're going to talk about the season as a whole um, in another episode that will come out in the future. So uh, we'll watch through the whole season because I know I felt very, I don't know, unsure about how the the first half of the season was. I wasn't totally sold on it. So when we rewatch the whole thing, now that the finale is done, then we'll put together our thoughts and blast out an episode afterwards. Yeah, Um, I think it'll be interesting to see if the first part of the season and the second part actually do kind of mesh because my memory of them is not meshing very well. Yeah. So yeah, we've got some thoughts. (laughs) 
So please send us your thoughts on the season as a whole as well if you are doing your rewatch. And now we have a couple things in our mailbag. So, super sad mailbag song. Super sad mailbag song. Wah, Crying aw. all the time. Checking out mail. Super, super sad mailbag song. Hmm. <laughs> so our first message is from Susan. Um, we already brought up some of the things that you mentioned in your email, Susan. So I'll go to a few of the points we didn't get to. Susan said... What accent do you think The Good Place Simone will have? I know many Australian watchers hated her Australian accent. Yeah, she still has that Australian accent. I don't think that's going to change. I know back in season one, Eleanor was talking about, well, how come Tahani's the only one here with an accent? You know, she must have kept that because she's so full of herself. I think people just keep their accents. And the writers are probably smacking themselves in the face about the whole Chidi speaks French thing, because that's really the only thing that's kind of throwing a wrench in the gears here. He speaks so many languages that his accent has just averaged out. That's all. Okay. Um, That's the answer. (laughs) Yeah, I think, unfortunately, a lot of people who do not like her Australian accent are just going to have to deal with it next season, because I don't think it's going away. Um, Susan also asked, do you think the bad place actually killed Simone? That would be awfully dark for a sitcom. Yeah. I was thinking about that because the way that Sean brought it up, like the way she died. Do you want to hear? It's hilarious. Mm. And also, oh, well, it was really just kind of convenient that she happened to be dead. So Mm -hmm. we just sent her here. That would be really dark. I don't think that that's true i don't think they actually killed her i think there was some sort of freak accident and maybe sean's gonna link it up to somehow if chidi had been there she wouldn't have died or what if it's what everyone was thinking in the first place that it's vicky what if they made a simone skin suit and just Mm. threw vicky in it okay um i don't think they can do that no but (laughs) but you know, but, let's cover yeah. all our bases just in case it happens. Then you heard it here first. <laughs> um, Susan also asked, is Doug Forsett going to be one of the four new humans? It's easy to imagine that he could meet with a comic death while trying to do good. I would actually love to see how he would do uh, once he achieves success with his plan of doing good. Yeah, it would be interesting to see what kind of life Doug Forsett would have to live now that he's actually in the good place and he doesn't need to worry about climate change and the rights of snails yeah and all those things right when suddenly there aren't the same kind of rules how does he live his life yeah it'd be interesting i hope i don't see doug force that i'm sticking with this whole i don't like seeing people that we already know i'm not a huge like i love simone but i'm not a huge fan of her being here i also don't really like john so there's that no, he's the worst. Yeah, but not in like a fun way. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not a fan of him. <laughs> um, it just kind of reminds me of in Lost, like I think it was what, like season three when people kept asking like, what about all those other people on the island? We have to, we haven't met all the other people that were in the plane crash. And then they introduced other characters and people are like, well, we don't care about these characters. <laughs> we just want our main cast. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Paula and is it Paolo? <laughs> Paolo and you don't even remember Paolo and Nikki, Nikki and Paolo. Yeah, they were terrible, and I didn't give two craps yeah. about them. Thank you, Susan, for your email. Most of the responses when I asked people for their thoughts on Twitter were just gifs and emojis of people crying. Uh, I feel ya. I feel all of ya. Uh, and we did get a message. From Anna at Anna MCG. Um, She said, So I feel like there's a big hole in this plan Michael has with redoing the experiment. The thing that motivated Eleanor to seek out Chidi and improve herself was the mistaken identity lie. Real Eleanor and fake Eleanor. Unless they're going to do that with one of the new people we haven't met yet, what's going to be the motivation to change and improve? The jerk blogger just thinks he belongs in heaven, and Simone doesn't really have any flaws. She's just a victim of the problem with the point system. Exactly. That's what I mentioned earlier. Anna, you get it. You get it. (laughs) 
Yes. Um, so. But the part here that she points out was the mistaken identity lie. Um, that's really what started everything. Everything. Yeah. So this jerk blogger who doesn't seem to care at all and is just excited for the plastic surgery possibilities of the afterlife. And Simone, who's basically already a good person. Who are we going to have? Who's going to have a mistaken identity? Yeah. And is that person going to even care? Or are they going to think, woohoo, I got out of it? Like, yeah. No or like when Eleanor says, hey, this is the good place they're gonna, and this is who you are. And they'll be like, oh, actually, that's not me. Are and, they going to speak up? And the only reason that Eleanor ended up asking Chidi for help is because they were put together as soulmates. Yeah. If he had been some random person in the neighborhood, she probably never even would have talked to him. Right. So there's so many different situations, like so many cogs that are not in the same gear system. Like, it's totally different. How are they going to do all this? We'll find out. But it's it's frustrating because we can't see it. Mm -hmm. It's going to be such a feat to pull this off. Yeah. So, yeah. Unless all of season four is just going to be pandemonium. <laughs> Okay, let's welcome the insanity of the universe, I guess. Mm -hmm. Let's find, what did Eleanor say? Joy in being in this particular moment? Something like that? Okay. I guess we'll have to wait till what, like September? Oh, sad times. So that brings us to the end of another season of Forking Bullshirt, a multiverse radio production. If you like the show, if you've loved this season, if you just couldn't wait to listen to the newest episode please leave us a rating and a review on iTunes. It is the best way for others to find the show. And if you want to get in touch with us, we're on Twitter at Multiverse Radio. You can tag your thoughts with F Bullshirt. We're also on Facebook at Multiverse Radio Podcast. And you can always email us from our website, multiverseradio.ca. As Jason mentioned, we are going to be doing another episode um, on the entirety of season three. That will come at some point in the future. I do not want to promise a time, um, but we will talk to you then. Bye. Bye. <laughs>